Hey, Coach. Well, you knew Brian Van Gorder. He, you played against him a, well, a few times, so you probably had an idea of what he would do against the option. This new defensive coordinator of Notre Dame's, any thoughts, anything? No, um, it's a new D.C., um, probably a new plan. We don't have any idea. Um, we'll go off what we saw last year and, um, and try to you know, figure out what we think he might do and line up against that and uh, practice against it and then come out on Saturday. And um, if, it's, if it's right, we'll, we'll play. If not, we got to adjust and go from there. I, I heard Brian Kelly was talking about it. They have players that they, they kind of change some positions when they play the option. They bump safeties down to linebackers, mm -hmm. that type of thing. Have you noticed that over the years with Notre Dame? I mean, they, they put their best players in positions to be successful. Um, they got good athletes. I mean, they want to make it simple for those guys. But um, regardless of where they at, you know, responsibility football still is still there. You know, so again, we'll, we'll have an idea um, from, from the first snap, but. Again, they'll put their guys where they need to be at to be successful. Um, one guy to get them lined up if they're having um, – try to be multiple on defense. One guy to get them lined up. But, again, my man, it's, it's going to be one of those deals where we're going to press against what we think we might see, but go out on Saturday and see what, what they line up in and go from there. And go from there. What um, – they, they took some heat at times this year for giving up a lot of points, mm -hmm. but it appears as though their defense is improving. Coach Kelly seems to feel that way. Mm -hmm. They've uh, held their last few opponents to a low number. Mm -hmm. Do you see them getting better on defense? Oh man, regardless of what, that's, it's Notre Dame, the Fighting Irish. They, they're going to be better than what, better than us. You know, so they're more athletic, bigger, stronger, faster. Obviously, you know, we always hope that we can make the field even with our offense and what we do. Um, but the last game against Miami, they were playing fast. They were playing fast. You know, mm -hmm. so it was like, oh boy, here we go. You know, so. It's, it is what it is, my man. Um, we got the lineup. It's, it's going to be a, it's going to be a physical game for us. You know, we're going to do what we do, and hopefully, we can come out with the, with the W. Uh, Zach Aby, how's he coming along as the backup quarterback? He's coming along well. You know, we um, hopefully this year we'll find some time uh, to get him in the game, but uh, that hasn't worked out. You know, but he's getting a lot of reps. He has he has an entire second huddle by himself, and I give him many reps. You know, so he's getting all the reps in the second huddle. He's playing well. He's improving. You know, I'm still getting on about a few things, but the, the kid's going to be a good football player. You know, it's, again, it's just going to take some time, you know, but, um, but all the rest that he's getting is, is definitely helping him. Obviously, with this decision with Tago, you now know that next year you're going to be looking at a young quarterback. It's mm -hmm. either going to be Zach right. or Malcolm or Josh, uh, uh, Jonah Lanusa. I don't yeah. know why I always call that kid Josh. Mm -hmm. Jonah, mm -hmm. who is back now. Right. Uh, do you like the crop you have? Do you feel oh, you I, got stuff to work with? Yes, I do. Yes, I do. Um, the, the main focus for next year is obviously to have a, a guy that's played, you know. So again, hopefully this year at some point we can get Zach in the game, get him some experience. So next year when, when he's the guy, at least he's, he's been in the game, you know. Mm -hmm. So hopefully, you know, and hopefully it's on a good note that Daddy gets in, that we're winning, you know, right, 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 and right. we can put him in there. So that's my goal. It's again, we, we're getting him a rest, but now we got to give him some game reps. Right. All right. Thank you, Coach. Right, okay. Coach Neil Matololo at the luncheon said that it was probably most missed tackles in his memory. Do you? Do you, is that you're well, the same? Without a doubt. Yeah. Do you know what that number is? Are we talking 17, 18? Is it that high? That was in the 20s. Really? Yeah. yeah. Now, you grade hard, so when you consider a missed tackle, it's not just because you got your hands on him. Missed tackle means you felt that a guy was in position. If I felt like he should have had the tackle and missed it, it's a missed tackle. Right, yeah. right. Whether you touched him or just if got you should have had the tackle, it's a missed tackle. Yeah. So, I know you have one week to try to get this corrected. How do you? Um, you know, a lot of it was them, too. I mean, they, they were pretty athletic. Uh, but we, we just have to take good angles. You know, we've got to practice taking good angles. Uh, you know, we don't tackle live, but we got to get our hands on their hips. Uh, you know, we wrap up inside. We just don't take them to the ground. You know, we're tagging off on the, on the, uh, on the edges. But if we're in that position, we should make the tackle. Mm -hmm. You know, a big problem we had was they would stop. We stopped our feet, and they give us a wiggle, and... We, we didn't get our hands on them. Yeah. Right, right. So the Houston coach, Tom Herman, you know, is very brags about hitting and going hard and tackling to the ground. Is that just you all just don't feel that's the right way to go? Uh, everybody has a different philosophy. Uh, you know, I, I don't think, uh, I don't know that that's the answer. You know, just my feeling. I know Coach Niamatololo, that's not his answer. Uh, you know, they, uh, it's a pretty physical game for us anyway. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we got a lot of guys that are still healing from the last game. And, right, and so to have them come out here like and that, go banging against yeah, one they, another. They, we, we wouldn't last a season. So, you know, you, you've got to manufacture as best you can. Right. Uh, and again, up to that point, we've been a pretty good tackling team. I right. Mean, you know, that so, would you call that an anomaly, what happened last week, well, based I, on the I, year I, as a whole? I, I would say they had three or four guys that are different. 
I mean, we haven't played anybody like them since I've been here. Right. I mean, they have three of them. So, you know, some of it was them. Some of it we, we've got to get better at it. I mean, right. You know, we, we're always looking to improve, but, uh, you know, you have to be smart about it too. You can't just go out and bang them and, you know, that's not the answer. Right. To, it, it, in my mind. Right, right. Okay. So Notre Dame is going to have good athletes too. Uh, your thoughts on what you're seeing out of their offense? We already know that Kaiser is one right. heck of a quarterback. He's a great quarterback, got a really strong arm, he's a really smart kid, uh, great O-line. I, I think their O-line is every, – every year I think they're probably the best coached O-line, uh, very athletic O-line. They can move. They're, you know, there are no stiff guys out there. Right, right, right. Uh, you know, good receivers, good running back. I mean, it's – Notre Dame. I mean, right. they're they don't change much year to year. Good tight ends. You know, I was gonna they, say they they, they they produce like twelve pro NFL tight ends in the time I've been covering that. Right. Yeah. And they and they come they one have, after another. They have good ones again. So you know, it, it's going to be a big challenge. We're just going to have to go out, fight like we do every week. Uh, you know, try to make some plays and get the ball turned over. You know, whatever we can do to to help the get the ball back to the offense and you know, hopefully at the end we're. We're ahead. Are they a lot different than Houston, Memphis, South Florida in terms of what they do? Uh, they're probably way more sophisticated. Their passing game is a more pro a, style, a, a, right? a real NFL passing game. I mean, they know the receivers know how to run the routes, where to run the routes. The quarterback it's timing knows, and yeah, yeah, they're and they're excellent at getting the protection called. Uh, you know, whoever's calling, I think Kaiser sets the protection, but they're really good at that. They use a lot of different protections, so we're going to have to kind of be spot on as far as where we're coming if we're coming with anybody uh yeah they're they're really really well coached and it's a uh you know it's a pro style offense yep all right thank you all right jameer the last time we spoke to you you were very nice and said hello to your mother and then you didn't say hello to your father i know so uh hello father uh this is a shout out for you uh gotta keep the whole family included also my brother and sister janae and cj hello so I was going to ask you about, you moved into second place all time at Navy receiving yards. How, how good does that feel? It feels amazing. You know, just blessed uh, that I've been put in a situation like that. And uh, I just give glory to God. Uh, my teammates are awesome, my family, and all my friends. So It's obviously very difficult to do when you're in an option offense and you spend so much time blocking. That's what it is here. Um, I mean, you've made the most of your opportunities. Is that kind of um, something neat that in – it means a lot more when they're not in a passing offense and you're setting records. Yeah, I mean, that's my big thing. Uh, all I ask is for opportunity, and when I give them the opportunity, I'm going to make the best of it. You know, you go in life and, you know, people make, you know, they complain, they make excuses, but all you need is opportunity. It's your job to go ahead and fulfill that, uh, fulfill your role and do the best you can in that opportunity. Well, that's why I was asking Coach Nehemiah, because I think a lot of wide receivers look at Navy and go, I don't know if I want to go there. They don't throw the ball. But the truth is, if you're a good player like Jameer Tillman, they will throw you the ball. I mean, they, you've gotten plenty of opportunities, haven't you? Yeah, absolutely. You know, all you can do is control what you can control. You know, what's there for you will be there for you, you know. So, uh, of course, going, coming here, I was like, oh, they're a running team. Uh, your receiver, how you feel about that? It was just like, hey, it's, it is what it is. You know, I'm going to practice my catching. I'm going to practice my blocking. And, and, again, the opportunity is there, and I've been able to take advantage of it. So don't let anything deter you. Don't let anybody tell you that you can't do something or the situation is not there for you. Just go out there and play your best and, you know, you might end up being second in receiving. Well, you've had a lot of great catches during your time here, but that catch at the end of South Florida, I don't even know how you got it. How did you, is, and where does that rank? Because you had the one where you went, climbed the ladder. I remember that. I forget what game. But where does this one rank against South Florida? I don't even know how you made that catch. I mean, that's just is that's just instinct and that's just practice. You know, you, pra go up, you practice catching over DBs and, you know, just gets in the game. You don't really think about it. You just do it, you know. So... I mean, it was an awesome catch. Uh, I haven't really looked at it because we lost the game. I mean, we lost the game. So, mm -hmm. you know, I watched the film, reviewed what I needed to. But, you know, it's like uh, I caught the ball against what, Rutgers my sophomore year, a Hail Mary, but I was out of bounds, you know. Right, right. So it's, it's one of those things like, yeah, it was a good play, but it wasn't good enough to get the win. Right. I was talking to Coach Ukaitis. He said there's been some NFL scouts in here to see you. Um, I know that we all know that powers to be will determine whether you get that opportunity. But do you feel like you could play at the next level if given the chance? Yeah, absolutely. Again, opportunity. all I need is opportunity. I'm going to do my best. Uh, I don't know what, what the future holds for me. You know, right now I plan to be, I hope to be a Marine Corps officer in the Navy. And you know, I mean, in the Marine Corps. And uh, that's where I'm going to go right now. The opportunity is given to me to play in the NFL. I'm going to take full advantage because that is my dream. I love football. Two more, two more two mm -hmm. things about Notre Dame. 
Uh, how satisfying would it be for you your last year to beat them? You've come close a couple of times. How satisfying would that be? I mean, it would be amazing. Uh, I always love playing Notre Dame. I always have teammates over there. I have Alize down there. I got Nico Fertitta over there. So I'm just really, really anxious to play them. We just get so close. It just leaves a bad taste in my mouth every time we get so close and lose. So hopefully we can go down there and take care of business. Coaches tell us that when they recruit high school kids, they talk about playing Notre Dame mm -hmm. and it's a recruiting tool. Did they do that to you? Uh, I mean, Navy was at the point where we were independent, so we got to play a lot, a lot of teams. So there's like, hey, we get to play Notre Dame, you know, we're going to play Ohio State. So that whole, like, you will have the opportunity to play those top tier teams that you always, that didn't recruit you or that you always dream of playing for. And, you know, who, do, what better place to be is than the underdog and to go in there and beat them. So I, re, I really enjoyed the opportunity. I love, and love playing here and getting to do that. Last but not least for me, um, Phil McConkey is one of the greatest players in Navy awesome history guy. of any position. Mm -hmm. I heard that he contacted you after you passed him on the all-time list. Is that true? And yeah. He's, tell me how cool that was. He's an excellent guy. We, uh, you know, it's a tradition after after the games we go we go to TGI Fridays. You know, I get my my burger or I get my pasta. And, you know, we're sitting. <laughs> you know, uh, you know. Cajun chicken uh, shrimp pasta is my favorite. Okay. So, yeah, just in case. Hey, hey, after the season. Uh, uh, yeah, I was just sitting there at the table, got my family around me, you know, phone called me from New York. I pick up. He's like, hey, this is Phil. I was like, oh, man, like, you know, I, you know, you knew I, I, knew, was, I knew he right? was. I was like, cool, you know, that just goes to show you what the brotherhood is. You know, right. nobody's upset that, you know, you broke their record. They just want the best for the people down the line. And that was just great for him to reach out because he didn't have to, you know. Right. We've never interacted before, but it was a pretty cool experience for a brother to reach back down to me and tell me congratulations. All right, very good.